Hello, Keith Rocker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today I've got something a little bit new and different. A couple of weeks ago, um, I picked up, found this on Facebook Marketplace. This is a blacksmithing forge. And uh, it's actually something that I've been kind of keeping my eyes out for a long, long time. One of this type and style. And uh, one happened to pop up, uh, fairly local, within a couple hours drive, and uh, I, picked it up. So a little bit of background, um, going way back to when I was a teenager in high school, uh, my freshman year in high school, so back in the early 1980s, uh, I took a metals technology class at my high school. Uh, and it was taught by an instructor, uh, Dave Averett was his name. And uh, he was a blacksmith. And he actually had a blacksmith shop set up at the school. and. Uh, People who were interested in it could learn how to do it. I was very, very interested in it. I was very attracted to the whole blacksmithing thing, and I took very well took advantage of that. As with a lot of shop classes, you guys probably know a lot of the people that end up in these classes. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of them are kind of the deadbeats in the school. They're really not interested in just doing anything. They're just killing time. Uh, and that was the case in a lot of the shop classes that I took. But there was also a lot of kids in there that wanted to learn, people like myself. I was one that really wanted to learn. And I took that opportunity to learn some basics of blacksmithing uh, in this high school class. As a result of that, I started setting up a little blacksmith shop at my home. Um, at first I had a little homemade forge. I was using a hair dryer for a blower and a chunk of cast iron for an anvil. And slowly through my teenage years, I put together a pretty nice little collection of blacksmithing tools. And uh, actually in the late 1980s, uh, I was a camp counselor with the Boy Scouts out in New Mexico at Philmont Scout Ranch. And one of those summers I actually was working as a blacksmith, demonstrating it as well as teaching kids uh, blacksmithing. Uh, out there in the back country up in the mountains of New Mexico, living off the grid for two summers uh, while I was out there doing that. Very fun time, an interpretive history type program. Um, blacksmithing was something I was always very interested in. When I was in college later on, I kind of screwed up my right shoulder, had to have surgery on it, and for a long time, any time that I would spend any prolonged periods of time with a hammer, it just played havoc on my shoulder. Fortunately, that's all been fixed now, and I'm kind of behind it, but I had kind of gotten out of blacksmithing and started getting into more of the machinery type stuff, but the blacksmithing bug has really kind of always been there for me. Uh, years ago, again, going back to my high school days, my teenager years, I had a friend who was a blacksmith and he had one of these cast iron forges like this. This one here is made by the Champion Forge and Blower Company um, and it comes with the blower mounted on it. Uh, really nice setup. And I have been wanting one of these ever since then. Um, and just recently, as I was thumbing myself through Facebook Marketplace. Lo and behold, there it was. The forge that I've been looking for for years had never been able to really find one. I, you know, I had been like seriously searching one out, but I stumbled across this and I took the opportunity to go get it. Uh, what I wanna do with this is I wanna kind of restore this. I wanna get it back to what it was like pretty much when it was new. I've got some catalog pictures. In fact, I'll put a picture here that kind of shows what this looked like when it was new. Uh, it was had a, had the hood on there with the, for the, to put a, a, a chimney in your shop or whatever, a smokestack for it to pull the fumes off. Uh, originally, this forge was a little bit higher. You can tell that this one has been adapted with wheels up underneath it. And the people that I bought this from told me they're, they do some blacksmithing and they told me that they actually did this because they bought this to set it up at a little local fair uh, that, that they did, and it was easy for them to kind of roll this thing, roll it out. This thing weighs over 300 pounds. I think it's about 350 pounds. Um, so it was kind of difficult to move around. So they put the wheels on there. And in the process of putting the wheels on, they kind of chopped the legs off, and this thing is really a lot lower than it should be. I want to get those legs fixed. Um, there's a few little issues with it. The blower works. It's blowing air. It is kind of noisy. Uh, I'm probably going to take this apart, check it out, see what needs to go on in there. Um, 
I have totally rebuilt these blowers before, built all new gears. I did one at the museum where I totally put new gears in there, rebuilt every gear in it. So I, I don't know what we're going to get in there, but we're going to take a look at that. Uh, but I just want to get this thing, again, back to original condition. That's my goal. And uh, I'm not really, don't think I'm going to become a, you know, be doing a lot of blacksmithing content on my channel or whatever, but I would like to have a forge that I can go tinker around with occasionally. And uh, I, there's been time, several times, that I've actually gone out to the museum and used their blacksmith shop when I needed to forge something for a project. I would like to be able to have that here at my house and be able to kind of use a lot of those tools that I had years ago. So anyway, long introduction. We're going to take this thing apart today. Um, once it's apart, I'll probably send it out, have it sandblasted, cleaned up. We'll look for any issues that need to be taken care of. And we're going to go ahead and restore this back to original condition. So to make this assembling this thing a little bit easier, I think what I want to do is get it picked up. I want to flip it upside down and kind of put it on this, my saw horses over here. And I think this is going to make handling it a lot easier. So we're going to use the gantry crane. Uh, and this thing weighs over 300 pounds. It's a pretty large, heavy casting. So uh, we're going to use, take advantage of this since we got it. I switched to some shorter straps just uh, because I want to make sure I got enough room to lift everything up. All right. Let's uh, ease it back down here. Get these uh, wheels off. Just put a rod through here with a cotter pin on it. And we'll just pull these wheels off. And that should slide all the way out there. And now I want to get this contraption off. They just took a bunch of U bolts and uh, kind of attached a piece of pipe there, tubing. I'm not going to try to pull all these. I've got rusty bolts. I'm just going to cut it off with a grinding disc here. Cut these off. Made easy work of that one. Do the same thing on this side. And guys, these U-bolts are just not worth saving. We're just going to cut them. So next I want to take this metal bracing off that goes on these legs. And this all appears to be original, although a little bit bent up, but completely salvageable. We'll be able to reuse that. There's a carriage bolt that comes through this. Square head nut on the end. I'm just going to take a wire brush, clean these threads up, and see if we can screw those out. Put a little uh, penetrating oil on these. 
giant socket to fit up on the square head nut here. And that came right off. That one's being stubborn. There it comes. All right. We'll go ahead and get the other side done too. This one is spinning in the carriage head spinning over here. See if I can grip this with a pair of pliers enough to get it out. There we go. All right. So we'll take these irons out. Those will be easy enough to straighten up and uh, reuse. You can see where they unfortunately took a saw and cut these uh, pipes off. These legs just kind of tapered on out and gave it a good bit more height and a lot more stability, but we'll just, should be able to make some new legs without too much trouble. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put some penetrating oil down here. These are, appear to be just uh, threaded into these bosses with some uh, pipe threads. I believe this is just pipe like regular black plumbing pipe that these were made out of. That's what it appears to be. Hopefully we'll let these soak for a little bit and those will come out easier when the time comes. All right. So next I want to get this blower off and I think I'm going to use the gantry crane again, just to do my heavy lifting for me. There's two bolts that connected to this casting, this arm that comes off the bottom and uh, should come off pretty easily. Assuming we get those bolts to come out easy. Let me uh, put a little penetrating oil on these. There's a little gap in between there. Probably get a little bit down to those threads. I'm going to take a sling and just kind of come around this whole part down here that will catch it so hopefully it won't fall. All right, let's see if we can get these screws back out. Okay, that one is off. the blower off. I'm just going to set it down out of the way right now. So it looks like we got a piece of pipe that's coming off of a flange here off of this uh, forge pot here in the bottom and originally that would have had a piece of metal piping that went all the way to that blower. It looks like that that piece of piping had probably rotted out at one time and uh, they just put made a flange piece come off of here and they had a little piece of flexible real cheap thin aluminum uh, flexible piping. Um, I'm going to probably see if I can't fabricate again a solid piece of pipe to come in here and make some flanges, get it back like it was originally. But right now I want to get these off. So let me get a couple of wrenches. Do it first off. Let me just go ahead and squirt these down. These bolts are not original bolts. So hopefully they'll come off pretty easily. These are going to come off hopefully without much trouble. First one did anyway. <laughs> Put some gasket sealer in there. Seal that up. Probably not the smartest thing to do on a forge is getting this hot, but <laughs> I guess it worked. All right, I think I'm going to I think we're going to try to take these legs off next. And again, I think these are just 
thread it up inside this uh, casting. I don't, oh, ha <laughs> ha. I was afraid these things were gonna be really, really stuck. That's a lot easier than I was anticipating. Hopefully they'll all be this easy. Because that was way easier than it should have been. All right, one down. Ah, that one's giving me a little bit more of a fight. There it goes. All right. So guys, I like working with an aluminum pipe wrench as much as I can because they're lightweight, they're easy to handle. Um, but when you gotta get a cheater bar like we're about to do, I got the big heavy one here. That's a uh, cast iron or whatever, cast steel, I don't know what it is. But if I'm gonna put a cheater handle on it, I don't wanna put it on my aluminum one. So uh, just a tip there, if you don't already know it. It's nice to have both. But don't use the cheater bar on the on the, the, the cast ones here. They will are on the aluminum ones, so they will break. Now I've got a cheater bar. It's way longer than it needs to be. Hopefully, way longer than it needs to be. Yep, that gives me all the leverage I need to get that started. I should be able to get this one out now. I think. Now we're gonna put the wrench on, put the cheater bar on here, and again, hopefully this will come on off without tearing everything up here. Man. There we go. I think we can get it now. All right, we got our legs off. Next, I wanna get this uh, little T-pipe off. This is uh, what directs the air up in there. There's also a clinker breaker that's missing this in here. Should be in here. There's some bolts that come through, guys. These bolts are rotten through. I'm not even gonna try to take them apart. We're just gonna cut them out. They've gotta be replaced anyway. a rusty mess. I'll worry about that later. I think I'm going to move the whole pan down and get this uh, sawhorse right up underneath that forge pan there. Well, I didn't realize I didn't have that in the frame there, guys. Sorry about that. I'm taking out that uh, forge pan. 
but you can see we got it out. Let's see if I can screw these off or whether I'm going to have to cut them off. There's four bolts here holding this uh, arm to the blower on place. <coughs> and that one's going to be spinning in there. Let's see if I can hit this off with a chisel. There we go. See, weeds will come off. That one's going to spin. That one's going to spin. So I think we'll just uh, cold chisel them. Get a bigger hammer. There we go. And there we go. Now I got a couple of screws here that just uh, bolt on. There was a hood that was on this, an exhaust hood. Yeah, I'm gonna knock these off with the chisel. Here we go. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's cast into the bottom of this number 71. That was the catalog number for this forge. And uh, I've got a digital copy of the catalog 1911, I think. Anyway, it's got this in there and it's listed as a number 71. So uh, this is what we got. All right, we're gonna get this uh, thing out of the way. Picked up here. And I'll set her down on the floor. Well, guys, I think I'm going to cut this video off here. We're pretty much uh, running out of time. We've got the forge taken apart, except for the blower. And I also want to take that blower completely apart, really inspect it, see if there's anything that needs to be done on it. And uh, I just want to get it completely stripped down to every single part and uh, to, before we really start putting this thing back together. So in an upcoming video, we will take on the challenge of taking that blower apart and uh, see if we can get that one done as well. Uh, but for today, that is going to be a wrap. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments, always greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon to get notifications when new videos are posted. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, also, as always, a big huge thank you to my supporters of the site through Patreon, PayPal, etc. We could not do everything we do without all of your help. And guys, with that, we'll catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.